We learned how to use the built-in Python console and use the built-in editor to write code. Let's see some PyQGIS in action. What can you do with Python with QGIS? Let's see an example that will kind of help you understand why using Python within the QGIS environment is more powerful than using QGIS alone or Python alone. And with many of you, you say, I have a workflow, I want to automate this. We'll see how to do this. First, let me load some data. So in your data package, I can go to the QGIS browser and in the data package, I have this file called showline.shp. I can drag and drop it into QGIS. This is a simple shape file that just has the show line of San Francisco. If I open the attribute table, you can see it has got one feature and it's got some six columns. So go and find this in your data package. You can use the QGIS browser to navigate to the directory where you saved it. If you have saved your unzipped your data package into a downloads folder, you can go to home, downloads, PyQGIS masterclass, and you can find this show line SHP and you can drag and drop that. If you have data somewhere else, you can also you know, navigate to the directory. One tip is if you have a directory that you always use for your storing your data and which is always very deep into your data structure, once you have found the directory, you can right click and say add as a favorite. Once you do this, it'll always appear at the top. So you can see I have some directories which are marked as favorites. I have my downloads directory, so I can just access this directly here. And I use a lot of Earth Engine and I have export the data into my Google Drive. So I have this also as my favorite. So I don't have to always go and find the directory. So pro tip for anybody to ease your QGIS workflow. My attribute table, you can see I have all these columns. Let's say I want to now demonstrate some task that you need to do and we'll see how to do the same task using Python within QGIS. So let's say my task is to delete this column. I want to delete this column from the attribute table. So if I were to do this for maybe 100 layers or maybe just one layer, the way to do this in QGIS is I want to delete this. So I would first put the layer in editing mode to edit any vector layer You need to first toggle the editing button. So I'll go and press this button, which now allow me to edit things. Then I'll open the attribute table and I can say, oh, I want to delete the column. So I will come here and there's a button called delete field and I'll select the field that I want to delete. I'll click OK. It's deleted. It's still not written to disk. It's still my layer is in editing mode. Once I'm done, I will click the editing button again. It'll say, do you want to save the layers, save the changes? And only when I click save, it'll be done. So for deleting one field, I have to do like five clicks and go through this process. The one advantage of the PyQGS API is it's a completely open API. Contrary to some other commercial software, you are able to access every functionality of QGIS completely using Python. So if you, for example, use QGIS for half an hour and did something, everything can be done using code. And that means anything you do in QGIS can then be automated. So let's see a simple example of how to do whatever I just did using code. So let's say I want to delete one field from this layer. Can I do this using PyQGIS? Let's see, I'm going to open the Python console and write some Python code. And again, First, you can understand and watch this. We'll have the whole course to understand this, but I want to just show you that whatever you can do within the UI, you can also do this using the code. So we're going to copy this code here. There's four lines of code. It says, first line is, I want to select the layer. So whatever layer is currently selected, I want to get the layer object, iface.active layer, then start editing. This is equivalent to clicking the button. So I put the layer in editing mode. There is a function called delete attribute. So I said, delete attribute, the column with index one, which is the second column that we want to delete. And once we did it, we can then commit the changes. So this is what our attribute table looks like currently. We want to delete the second column. So if we run this code, it should just go and do this. So let me select this layer, copy paste the code here. And then to run the operation, I just click this play button. Script ran. Let's see what it did. I can open the attribute table of this. You can see the column is gone. We didn't have to click anything. Our code did all the work for you. And that means now if your task is delete the first column from all the hundred layers, you can write a simple Python script. They'll just do this in five seconds versus you having to do this manually. Try this out. You can open the Python console, copy paste the code from section two, just four lines, load the shoreline layer from your data package, select the layer, and then just run the code. If you run it multiple times, it'll keep deleting the second column. 
over and over it. So okay, now if I run it again, it has four columns. If I run it one more time, it'll have three columns and so on. It'll keep deleting the second column always. So just run it once and see what happens. That is layer.rollback. So if you did some edit and in the code, for example, if you're writing a plugin and you have a button saying that save changes, if you press save and the user says, no, I don't want to save, you can call layer.rollback and all the edits will be reverted. But once you commit changes, it, they are actually committed. So when you delete something, for example, if I edit and I say, I want to select this feature and delete this, it's giving me confirmation. I deleted this, it's not deleted yet. It's deleted only when I say save layer edits. And this is doing the layer.commit changes. If I put the layer back and say, do you want to save the changes? I said, don't save. It's calling layer.rollback in under the hood. So again, all the functionality that you have in the user interface, you can find the Python equivalent and automate this. So the idea is all of this, whatever you're doing in QGIS is also available as Python code. For now, do not worry about understanding what is iFace, how do you find what functions are there? That's what the rest of the course is about. This was to understand that we have all the features available, all the UI features can now be automated using Python. So this was your first introduction to how to run some PyQGIS code within the QGIS editor and have it apply some changes on your dataset.